Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild a Walbro HDA carburetor that's already been taken out of a chainsaw. And here's the carb up close. Here's the model of the carb HDA120. Now at this point what you need is a good Phillips screwdriver and remove this screw here. Now the cap will come off. And you can see there's a bit of dirt inside the carb. The reason why I'm replacing the carb kit is because the saw's been sitting for a number of years and I want to make sure when it goes out that it's going to run for good. Sometimes if you don't replace the carb kit, they do run for a while after being in storage, but shortly after they may start to act up again. Now inside here there's a small screen, it needs to be removed and I'm using a pick for that. So just reach in and grab it. Sometimes the screen looks clean, but it isn't. The reason for that is because sometimes the fuel gets varnishized, it turns into like a paint or a glue, and it stops the flow of fuel through this screen. Now that's all I need to remove on this side of the carb. I'm going to flip that over and remove the four screws here. And now the cover should come off. Sometimes it's stuck to the diaphragm, just as you can see here. So I'm just going to reach in and pry with my little pick and it's going to come off. And now I'm going to remove the diaphragm. This is actually the metering diaphragm by the way. And now I'm going to remove the metering lever and the needle. And to do that, I'm just going to loosen this screw here. I am not going to completely remove it. Now be very careful when you do this because there is a small spring underneath the metering lever and you don't want it to fly off on you. Here it is. So you're best to grab it and put it in a safe place right away. And here's the needle valve, the metering lever and the pin. Now overall this carburetor looks pretty clean inside. It's just basically a matter of replacing the carb kit. However, I'm just going to spray a bit of carb cleaner on the parts. I'm not going to use my ultrasonic cleaner today because there's no point. I'll just let this soak for a bit and then put the car back together. If you see a bit of dirt inside the holes here, you can use your pick and a paper towel or a rag and just rub it in there. However, to clean a bit of the gasket that's remaining on the carb, I'm going to use my die grinder with a scotch Brite pad. It's a green pad, it's fairly fine, and I'm just lightly going to go over to make it nice and clean. And I'm going to air blow the part. Now the kit I'm using for this carb today is a K22-HDA. This is a full repair kit, it's got all the hardware including the needle valve. And before you start any job, you want to confirm that you do have the correct kit by just matching up the diaphragms and the gaskets from the kit. And you also want to make sure that the needle valve is the same size in the new kit as was previously installed in your carburetor. So to start with, I'm just going to put the spring back in the carb here. Now you want to grab the little pin in the new kit, the metering lever, and the needle valve and just insert it right here. Now with your carb like this, make sure the spring is nice and straight up. Now you want to make sure the spring goes underneath the embossed part on the metering lever. Now I'm going to carefully put this in. You want to get the pin under the screw like that. Once it's in, just hold it. Take a quick look to make sure your spring is in there properly. Now tighten it up before the whole thing comes apart on you. Don't over tighten that screw because it could easily strip the threads. Now for the metering lever adjustment I like to put it even with the base of the carb. You can use this Walbro carb tool and it's part number 500-13-1. There will be a link underneath today's video to buy this carb tool and also the carb kit. So I'm just going to go like this. I can see it's just slightly above the base. So what I want to do is lower the tab here on the metering lever. To do that, what I'm going to do is hold down the needle. Don't put too much pressure on the needle. And then I'm just going to push down with my thumb. I'll do it a bit more. And now we're getting closer. And I'll do it just a bit more. Even though it's just slightly up, that's going to do. If you don't have this tool, you can just use a straight edge or something like that. 
and make it even. Now at this point I'm going to install the gasket that goes here and the metering diaphragm goes on top and I'll put the back cover on. As you see it's pretty easy to get it right because all the holes match. And now you want to put on the four screws. Now on the other side of the carb to start with you want to install the screen. Just simply insert it in the hole. And here I'm using a 930 seconds drill bit. I'm going to use the back end of it to just drive the screen in there. And you want to make sure it goes in nice and evenly like that. Now I'm going to install the gasket on this cover. And now the diaphragm can go on. Notice the sequence or the configuration of the diaphragm and the gasket. The gasket goes on the cover first and the diaphragm after. And now you want to install the whole cover with the diaphragm and the gasket right on the carb like this. And once you move the cover and you know it's locked in, it's in the correct position. And now you want to install the screw. Now before we install the carb, I'm going to do a pressure test with this little tester. I'm just going to connect it here. I'm going to pump it up between 5 to 8. And it's holding the pressure pretty good. So that's all there is to rebuilding your Walbro HD8 carburetor that goes on your chainsaw. Thanks for watching guys and have yourselves a great day.